In this session in the Fast Track Fly Fishing Program, we need to really talk about entomology. Entomology is the study of insects, and my intent is not to teach you Latin, uh, or certainly not to make you an expert on, on, on these aquatic insects that fish eat. It's taken me 30 years to get where I am in understanding them. So for, for me to do it any other way, to try to get you to speak Latin would be ridiculous. However, what we need to understand is that what we do as fly anglers is we imitate these aquatic insects. 98% uh, of what a trout eats are aquatic insects. So when you see fly anglers fly fishing out in the water, what they're doing is they have a little piece of fur and feather on a hook, and what they're trying to do is imitate a certain aquatic insect. And if they're lucky and they get it right, they're going to catch a lot of fish. Uh, so when we look at the basics of fly fishing, and only two things catch fish, the fly rod and the fly. Uh, you need to be very good with a fly rod and, and very good with, with uh, entomology and, and, and flies. So before you can even begin to understand what flies are and, and, and how we use them in fly fishing, you've got to understand what it is we're trying to imitate. And it can really throw you off. Uh, you know, how do I memorize these bugs? How do I learn these bugs? There's so many of them. Uh, but we're going to delve into that now. So uh, uh, pay close attention because it's going to be a really simple thing. And, and when I sit there and start describing how this works, it becomes very important that you burn this in your brain. To really understand etymology, the first step you need to understand is you got to understand that trout eat aquatic insects. Up to 98% what a trout eats are aquatic insects. And uh, when we imitate flies, we're imitating aquatic insects. Uh, the question becomes, uh, how many of these bugs are in the river? Uh, well, there's actually millions of, of aquatic insects in a river. Millions, millions. And it can throw you off in a sense of how am I supposed to understand millions of millions of bugs? Uh, well, how many species are in the river then? Well, are there thousands? Are there millions? Uh, are there Hundreds? 500? 1,000? How many bugs are in the river that I need to know? And a lot of people, or new anglers especially, uh, they just walk away from that. And now they're really hurting themselves because they need to know this. So it's not that difficult. It's rather simple, as most things in fly fishing. Uh, there's really only four aquatic insects in a river that you need to worry about. Four. Now, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out or should be too hard for you to memorize. If I said to you, memorize the color red, blue, yellow, and green, it wouldn't take you long within a minute or so to burn that in your brain. And you need to take that same logic uh, to what these four aquatic insects are. Uh, it's really simple. That's what we're imitating. So it's not a big thing. There's not millions of these things I need to worry about. It's I don't need to worry about this or that and everything. It's just these four aquatic insects. So we go back to the beginning and I tell you that 98% what a trout eats are aquatic insects. You only need to memorize four. That's it. And you match those four with the appropriate fly and figure out what that fish eating and then you give it to them. So when we look at the simplicity of entomology, uh, it's not that difficult to do at all. But let's recognize what these four aquatic insects are. It's basic. One is what we call a mayfly. And a mayfly has an upright wing, and that's called a mayfly. And you'll recognize mayflies by their upright wing. The second aquatic insect that you need to understand is called a caddis, or a caddisfly. The third one you need to understand is a midge. And the fourth one, and the fourth one is called a, a stonefly. So if, if you look at these three aquatic, these four aquatic insects that you need to know, uh, we recognize them by their adult wing shape. And we need to have uh, flies in your fly box that represent all four of these aquatic insects. And the best way for me to really get into uh, what these aquatic insects are and how you start understanding is we have to do, uh, the best thing would be for me to take you out of the, your computer, bring you here in front of me, I can take you down to the river, and we can do what we call a white pan entomology. 
uh, session. And that's uh, just take a white, a pan, you paint it white, and you go out in the river with a bunch of nets and scenes, and you fill it up with a bunch of aquatic insects. And then I can start going through and say, look, here's a mayfly nymph, here's a caddis, and so on and so on. But I can't do that. That's impossible. So in, in essence, what we're going to do then is, is, is me do it metaphorically. And how I can do that is, is I can metaphorically, I can take, go down to your local river with an excavator and I can take 10 large scoops of river bottom uh, out of your river within a mile stretch and I can put them in a big pile. What I have is a big pile of river rock and gravel and mud and, and sticks and grass and all kinds of stuff. That would be a pretty good accurate sample of what the river bottom looks like at your local river. Um, and that's also where our aquatic insects are. So what I have to do now to make sense to you is I have to go into that big pile of, of rocks and sticks and rubble and I have to separate all the aquatic bugs out of there from all the rocks and rubble. When I'm all done, I'll have two piles. I'll have a giant pile of river bottom and a big pile of aquatic insects. That's what trout eat are these pile of aquatic insects. So when I look at that pile of aquatic insects that are just swirling around looking like creatures you don't even want to touch because they'll bite you, they're so ugly. I look at that big pile and I can take that pile and I can divide it into four separate piles. Those four separate piles would be these four aquatic insects. That's how simple this is to understand. So when you're seeing a trout on a river and he's, he's rising, or what we call feeding, he's got to be eating one of these four piles. So it's kind of a process of elimination. And if you're really good, you'll know ahead of time what pile they're eating. Uh, so the simplicity is, is it's not thousands, it's only four. Therefore, when you see a trout rising in a, in a river, it can only be eating one of these three, four. Now, we also know that fly fishing is both surface and subsurface, dry fly fishing and nymph fishing. Uh, when, we're, when we're nymphing on the bottom or bottom fishing, it can only be eating one of these four. So when we look at things from a, an aerial perspective, you should have dry flies and you should have nymphs. You should, your dry flies should imitate these four aquatic insects and your nymphs should imitate the pile that I have on the floor. Okay, we, we've established what these, what these four bugs are. Let's take a look at them. Uh, you need to take a look at a real, what a real mayfly looks like. So we talk about mayflies. Uh, this is what they look like. Uh, they have a, what we call an upright wing. An upright wing is straight up. They have long tails and generally what we do is we classify mayflies by the color of their wing, the color of their body, and how, how, uh, what size they are. Are they, are they big or are they very, very small? But, but mayflies, uh, they're really cool. Uh, they're on the water for, for uh, a day or two and then they're gone. Uh, now the nymph for a mayfly looks something, something like this. They're, they're creepy crawly things. They're crawlers, swimmers. Uh, clingers, they're just living underwater. They're there for about a year and, and then they emerge and hatch. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what a, a caddisfly look like. Caddisflies are pretty important. Uh, it's really easy to identify a caddisfly because they look like a, a moth. So when we, everybody knows what a moth looks like, but what a caddisfly is, is kind of like an underwater moth. Uh, and, and when they emerge, uh, they, they, they crawl out from the water and bam, they've they're, they're got their moth look and they're off they go. Uh, the third one, what we talk about, we want to talk about the midge and we'll talk more about that in depth. But a midge is, is a little different uh, uh, from a caddis and a mayfly is a midge has a split wing. It looks an awful lot like a mosquito and uh, they're prevalent in all rivers and all lakes and all ponds. And in their nymphal stage, uh, we call them larvae. And from a larva, they'll move into the pupa. And the final one, uh, you get a picture of a, of a stonefly. Those are prehistoric <laughs> looking. They're, they're, they're big, they can be very big, and, they're, and they can be very ugly, and they can be, actually they can be pretty small too. Uh, but stoneflies are, are a little different from the three others in that uh, they actually crawl out of the w uh, water to, uh, 
uh, emerge. But, but the stonefly adult has a, uh, what we call a, a, a wing over wing, and you'll see that on the picture. Their wings are set on top of the other. And the nymph, of course, just looks just like if you touch it, it's going to bite you. So this is going to give you a good idea of what you're looking for and what these real nymphs look like. Now, to, to understand a little bit more about these four bugs, you've got to understand how they live uh, in our rivers. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, search image, and we talked a lot about what bug, uh, fish eat these bugs and how they eat them in, 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 uh, in previous sessions. But what we're going to talk about now is how these bugs really operate in a river. Uh, and to really understand that, you've got to understand that, that we really have two seas, uh, we don't really, but aquatic insects and, and air breathers, uh, water breathers, have two seasons. They have uh, uh, a season that we call season one. And season one, as most folks are familiar with season one, season one uh, is our, really our fishing season. So we talk about season one. It's usually uh, around April through November. That's season one. Everybody knows about season one. Uh, that's when everything's emerging, it's warm, uh, all the bugs are out uh, in the water, fish are hungry, they're eating, we have lots of hatches, multiple aquatic insects are on the move and, 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 and laying eggs and, and, and lots of life cycles, you know, they're playing soccer with their buddies on the weekends or, or, or going to church on Sunday. These bugs have their own life and they're doing their thing in season one. However, season two is different. Season two is November through April, better known as winter. <laughs> Ain't nothing going on in winter. Uh, these, these bugs are down. Uh, they're, they're not these big bugs anymore. They're really tiny bugs. They've just hatched out of their eggs. We have a new life cycle going on. Winter's pretty dormant for the water-breathing world. And we need to take a So when we really look at uh, these four aquatic insects, we have to keep them in context of we really have two seasons. So now I'll kind of quantify it for you. Uh, season one, our regular season, if I had to take these four piles, uh, I got a pile of mayflies, a pile of stoneflies, a pile of caddisflies, and a pile of midges, midges. If I had to quantify them by what a trout eats, it would look something like this. Mayflies. They have a pile that would represent 45 plus percent of what a trout eats during a season. 45 plus percent of what a trout eats during a season. Uh, caddisflies, for season one, it would look like that. 45 percent of what a trout eats during season one are caddisflies. And I know that's 90 plus percent of what a trout eats during the season are, are, are caddisflies and, and uh, mayflies. So when we look at the two piles left, they look really small. And together, it's 10% during the season. This is a rough figure, but it's, it's designed to give you an understanding of, of these four bugs and how they operate and how it interacts with the trout that eat them. So for you to, to understand aquatic entomology, step one is figure out what these bugs are fish are eating. Step two is understand how these, these fish are eating these bugs. So during the summertime, if I was to look at your fly box, I'd want to open your fly box and I would want to see pretty much a whole box full of nothing but caddisflies and mayflies because that's what fish are eating during the season. So now we talk about the simplicity of entomology. We said there's millions of these aquatic insects in our rivers. Uh, there's not thousands of species. There's only four. And, and you need to know what these four are. Now I'm really telling you, I'm, I'm narrowing it down to this. I'm saying to you that during our season, our real fly fishing season, 90% uh, of what fish are eating are two of the aquatic insects. And it gets better than that. They're not eating midges that very often, and they're not eating stoneflies. Now, th this will vary from river to river, it's just like most things in fly fishing. There's exceptions to everything. But this is designed to give you a concrete understanding of, of, of how to begin to understand this. So that's season one. Season one, you better have a lot of caddisflies and a lot of mayflies in your fly boxes, both dry flies and both nymphs. Uh, so that's season one. Season two, we have to look at it a little differently. When we look at the piles on season one, 
it would look like this. There would be a pile there, be a pile of stoneflies, a little pile of, of mayflies, a little pile of caddisflies, and a huge pile of midges. 99% midges. So that's what we're looking like in the wintertime. So probably what's on your mind right now, well, what is a midge? What's a midge? Well, a lot of people don't know what a midge is. And as you can see, you better understand what a midge is. You know what a mosquito is. Everybody knows what a mosquito is. Uh, well, a midge looks exactly like a mosquito, exactly. So if I have a, a midge on this hand and a mosquito on this hand, they'd look the same. So I go back to you now and say, do you know what a midge is? You now know what a midge is. It looks like a mosquito. So what's the difference between a midge and a mosquito? Well, a midge won't bite you and a mosquito will. You all know that. Number two, uh, mosquito larvae need to be at the top of the surface. They need oxygen. Caddis larvae live in the bottom of the river in mud. Some, some rivers, many rivers, have between 8,000 to 28,000 midges per square meter. They're just everywhere. Uh, and the third difference is mosquitoes have a season, usually late spring all the way through summer and then they're done. Midges, they don't have a season. They, emit, they emerge every single day of the year. They hatch every day of the year, 365 days. So it becomes very important that you understand what a midge is. And it's very critical that you know what a midge is in the winter. So it's from order diptera. You have mosquitoes, you have uh, midges, and you have uh, crane flies or daddy long legs or mosquito hawks, uh, those are in the same family. They have split wings. The midge is the important aquatic insect during the uh, uh, season two. And season two begins right when, the mosquito, uh, right when the midges start hatching. So when we look at our, our, our season two or our winter piles, what do you think is the easiest time of the year to fish? Well, it has to be winter. So we go back to the classic uh, definition of how to catch a fish on a dry fly. Number one, sea fish rising. Number two, figure out what they're eating. And number three, give it to them. In the wintertime, when you see fish feeding on the surface, they can only be eating a midge. It's that simple. During the season, you see fish rising on the surface. You're not too clear. Are they eating uh, a mayfly? Are they eating a caddis? Are they eating a, 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 a white mayfly or a yellow mayfly? Are they eating a, a, a size 16? It can be a little confusing, but not in the wintertime. Wintertime, uh, that's critical. Most of us, most of us will fish during the regular season. Uh, I would venture to say 90% of us will, will probably be fishing during the regular season. So at this point, let's go back to season one, where 90%, 90 plus percent of what a trout eats are caddisflies and mayflies. That's important. So I get back to when I say to you, when I open your fly box, I should see, you know, pretty much a whole box full of caddisflies and, and, and uh, I mean, uh, caddisflies and mayflies. That's what we're looking at. Uh, in the wintertime, I open your box, it should be all midges. It's, it's logic. Uh, so in season one, we better take a hard look at what a, uh, a caddis fly uh, and what a, uh, a mayfly really looks like and, and the difference they are uh, and, and go, go from there. So let's take a look at that. Uh, uh, a caddis fly, a caddis fly, Make it really simple. A caddis fly emerges in the late afternoon sunset. It's a it's a p.m. mayfly. I mean, excuse me. It's a p.m. aquatic insect. It happens in the evening. A mayfly is during the day. Now, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. 
Uh, a classic example would be the brown, brown drake hatches in the evenings, and hexagenia, same thing. So we have mayflies that would do it, but the dominance of a mayfly is usually during the day, all the way up to evening, but the caddis takes over at that point. Uh, second thing is, is that a mayfly has an incomplete metamorphosis. We're going to get into that in a second. And a caddisfly has a complete metamorphosis. That's, that's the general difference. Outside of their obvious uh, uh, visual differences, uh, these are the two key things we need to talk about. Uh, and understanding, this, these, understanding this, these, these quantifications, understanding uh, how these bugs operate a little bit and getting, getting behind that a little bit is going to help you when you start putting flies in your fly box and getting on the river and trying to choose the correct fly. So we know now that mostly during the season, trout are really keying in on both the uh, caddis fly and the mayfly. So let's take a, take a look at a mayfly's cycle of life and see how it looks like to the trout. So when, when we look at the life cycle of a trout, it always begins with an egg. And that egg is really, really, really tiny. You know, you can barely see it with a human eye. Uh, the, these mayflies, uh, they'll actually lay thousands of eggs. Uh, and that egg's gonna sit there, and when it's ready, it's gonna go to the nymphal stage. And that means that little tiny egg, is, <laughs> there's, a, there's a little nymph growing in it. And, uh, and when it crawls out of that little egg, it becomes what we call a nymph or larva in, in, in many of the scientific weight terms. But most fly fishermen call them nymphs. And the, 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 the actual uh, task of, of subsurface fishing is called nymphing, and we're trying to imitate these little nymphs. Uh, now, a nymph was going to crawl around the bottom and, and, and live on the bottom for a year. So it's not going to grow, it's going to molt. It's going to be like a snake crawling out of its skin. As it grows, it just crawls out of its skin. Uh, at some point in time, after about a year, Mother Nature dings it and says it's time for you to uh, become a winged adult. At that point, that little nymph uh, crawls under a rock and just freezes, and his outer skin becomes an ectoskeleton. And when you uh, break open that body, inside's a little butterfly, and after about a week or two, uh, that, that little ectoskeleton or nymph, that nymph is going to swim to the surface. And at the surface, it's going to crack like an egg out of that nymphal shuck, crawl out onto the surface, and look like a, a, a fully adult mayfly. We call it a dun or sub amiga. That dun cannot fly, it, it has to sit there on the surface and float down the river can't even use its wings. Uh, eventually, it does get the use of its wings, and it can fly away. And where it flies is off to shore. And it lands in a bushes and trees by the millions all along the shore. And on shore, it has to finish its metamorphosis. So mayflies have an incomplete metamorphosis. And what an incomplete metamorphosis means, it has to continue its morphosis outside the water. On shore, it actually crawls out of its skin or molts and becomes what we call a spinner. And the difference between a mayfly spinner and a mayfly dun is the clarity of the wing. A mayfly dun has a really dark wing and a spinner has a very clear wing. Now the metamorphosis is complete. Now that mayfly can, can mate, can lay eggs, and do its thing. Once that mayfly leaves the, 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 the side of the river, it flies up in the air where it mates with other mayflies, uh, uh, other males. And the males, as soon as they mate, will usually die and blow off the river, leaving the female uh, fertile. The, the female will now go back down to the river. She'll lay her eggs until the final laying, and, and they're like little dips, and then she will simply die. And that's when her, her wings will spread out, and she'll lay on the water, and that's called a spent spinner. Now that's the life cycle. That's the life cycle of a mayfly. 
And we as anglers, um, we have to identify what life cycle these fish are eating on, and we have to use the corresponding fly for that life cycle. Are we using a nymph? Are we using an emerger? Are we using a dun? Are we using a spent spinner? Well, we have to have those when we're identifying fish rising. Understanding how a mayfly works will help you identify best what kind of fly to use on the river. Now, how do we fish a mayfly hatch? So we're on the river and we see fish rising. We see fish rising everywhere and we get back to our old equation, see fish rising, figure what they're eating, give it to them. We're pretty sure what these fish are eating. They're eating some sort of mayfly, but we're not too sure uh, what they're eating. Are they eating the, the the adult done, or are they eating the emerger? We're not too sure, we can't really identify that. So how best do we start that mayfly hatch? Here's how it works. I'm gonna tell you right now, three o'clock in the afternoon on your local river, say there's going to be a, a blue-winged olive hatch. I've now told you, you're gonna to go to the river at three o'clock and you're gonna see a blue-winged olive hatch. There you have it, that's step one. Now, you see fish rising, you see blue-winged olives. You have to start you have to start fly fishing. And you start, a, 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 a mayfly hatch should be started in this way. We tie on the matching mayfly that we think's working. It looks like this. I'm gonna tie a mayfly on. And that's that blue winged olive I'm talking about on your local river. There it is. I've tied that on my line. That's matching that blue winged olive. But I'm not too sure what these fish are eating. Are they eating the duns or the merger? Around the bend of the hook with a clinch knot, I'm going to add, at 15 inches, a corresponding emerger. Now I've got the bases covered. That's how we start it. That's how I'd recommend that you start it. And now you can start working the progression, working your way through what these fish are doing. And it won't take you long to figure out if they're eating the done or the murder. And you can try different combinations of these things. And this is generally how I would recommend that you attack any mayfly hatch, especially if you're a new angler. Let's now take a look at uh, the life cycle of a caddisfly. Now, caddisflies have what we call a complete metamorphosis. They're a little different in, in, in a mayfly in the sense that they, they don't need to float on the water. So they usually start out with an egg like any other aquatic insect does. And from that leg, egg, they hatch out into the larva stage. Um, and the larva stage, it, it, it's, it's very similar to a mayfly in the sense that instead of having an ectoskeleton, they have a, a cocoon on them or a tube or they build rock structures over them to protect them from uh, uh, predators. And they actually hide in these things. And these little cases can be uh, sticks, debris, and they're in the river by the millions. And they just operate out of these little nests that they create under there. They look like, uh, in many cases, they look like little green worms. And as they grow, they outgrow their cases. And they will have to either abandon them and build new cases or build onto the old cases. And from there, uh, Mother Nature will bank them and say, it's time for you to become a winged adult. And they have to go into the e emerger type stage. They're going to become an emerger real soon. What happens is in their little cases, they seal off those cases and they crawl inside. And that, that's really, uh, for us air breathers, that's more like a cocoon. That's where the, the complete metamorphosis happens. Just like a caterpillar will spin a cocoon and, and then uh, a, a week or so later come out a monarch butterfly, it's the same kind of concept with a caddisfly. It's going through a complete metamorphosis. It's, it's turning into a, 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 a ferrite, uh, what we call ferrite pupil, pupa. And it, that pupil, when it's time to emerge, will open up the case and it is almost done. I mean, it has legs, it has arms, it has feet, it has antennae and wings, and it's just kind of encased in this little sleeping bag, and off it shoots to the surface. It just motors up to the surface, and it's just flying. It's now what we would call an emerger. Anytime an aquatic insect leaves the bottom of the river to swim to the surface, it's now in its emerger stage. And when it hits the surface of, or the meniscus, it struggles a little bit to break that meniscus. And when it crawls out of that meniscus onto the surface, it's like crawling out of your sleeping bag. You're fully developed. At that point, when, when he shakes that uh, sleeping bag off him, he just simply flies away. Where he'll mate, but he won't die. 
they, uh, a caddisfly can live from one to one to three weeks, depending on the species. They will lay their eggs and then die. Uh, and uh, oftentimes, people will see caddisflies uh, around all around them, and they're all over the place, and they think they're in a caddisfly nest. But really, what they're not seeing, or what they're seeing, is caddisflies laying their eggs. Uh, so that's a basic uh, that's a basic understanding of, of how the life cycle works. And again, it's like the mayfly cycle: is we have to imitate as anglers what these uh, uh, life cycle uh, stages are at, or, or what we call fishing the cycle. Uh, and how we fish a caddisfly hatch is you first have to understand what it is you're actually going to see uh, on a caddisfly hatch. Uh, you're going to see three things. One, you're going to see lots, thousands of caddisflies flying all over the place, and they have this horizontal flight. And when are you going to see this? Usually late afternoon, evening. You see lots of caddisflies shooting all up and down the very horizontal. The second thing you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of fish rising. A lot of fish rising. Lots and lots of fish rising. And the third thing you're going to see is really what you're not going to see. You're not going to see a hatched adult on the water. You're not going to see that because caddisflies have a complete metamorphosis. Once they emerge from that surface, they're flying away. They're not on the surface anymore. So what is it that you see then? You see lots of caddisflies. You see fish rising. If there's no adult caddis on the water, what are these fish eating? It can only be the caddis emerger, right? So what do you think you should be fly fishing in the evening around sunset when there's caddis all over. That's right, a caddis emerger. So then how do we fly fish a caddis hatch? Uh, well, it's really quite simple. It's almost like a uh, mayfly hatch uh, in a sense that it's oxymoronic in a sense that we're fishing the adult caddis fly. So what we want to do is put on an adult caddis fly. And there it is. Now, what I mean by oxymoronic is I've just told you what these fish are eating. They're eating the caddis emerger. And what am I telling you to do? Put on an adult caddis. Uh, that seems counterintuitive, but it's not. Because you have to understand, this is not a normal hatch. This is late afternoon or early evening. You don't have a lot of time to fish before it gets dark and you can't see. What you're basically tying on is an adult caddis that you can see. And around the bend of the hook, just like the mayfly, you're going to attach the emerger at 15 inches. Now, you can't see the emerger, but you can see the adult. And you will have a fish that will eat that adult, but you can have more fish eat that emerger. And as it gets dark, it's a lot easier for you to see where your emerger is. You know there's my caddisfly adult. I see it floating on the water. And you know there's my emerger. Now, what happens when you catch three fish on the caddis emerger? What do you do? Well, it's easy. You just take, get rid of this uh, caddis fly and you put it on another emerger. Why? Because it's logical. and Everything in fly fishing is logical. You make these changes on the water. What's important that you have is lots of caddis emergers in your fly box. So all in all, between the mayflies and the caddis flies, you know, it, the technique of fishing those hatches are the same. It's, this is not cut and dried. We're talking about you're new to fly fishing, and we have to get you so that you have a st strategic sound technique available to you when you see a hatch going on. This is how we do it in the very beginning. As you grow, grow as an angler, you can make those adjustments as you grow.